Do you really have to search for your own style in photography, or will it just happen naturally on its own? If you've been struggling with defining your style, I will show you something that could save you a lot of frustration. Developing your own style is one of the ultimate goals we have as photographers yet. It can be one of the most difficult things to achieve. But before we get started, there's an important question we need to answer. What even is style? It depends on who you ask, but it's generally agree that it has something to do with your photos having a certain look. Although it goes deeper than that, I think it also has to do with the way you look at the world. Try to think of it in terms of your personality and character reflected in your photographs. Now, if you spend enough time with photography, your personal style should eventually emerge on its own. But what I'm going to show you are three simple steps that will not only get you there much sooner, but could also help you to start producing work that really inspires you. Let's start with step one. If you're going to be inspired, first you need to find your inspiration. What works from other photographers do you really admire? And try to find images that you connect with on an emotional level. So we're going to collect all that work and pin it to a board. Now, obviously, your inspiration may be completely different from mine. Uh, maybe you're inspired by great landscapes or wildlife photos or, or just about anything else. It doesn't matter. You are in charge of curating this work. But by way of example, I'll share my story on how this process helped me. So not only did I struggle with my style, I tried just about all types of photography. And for many years, I just felt aimless. And now there's nothing wrong with doing photography because you enjoy it or because it relaxes you. But for me, I guess I always wanted it to be something more. And then some years ago, my interest in photography really began to shift and it became a lot more focused. It started when I saw the film Manufactured Landscapes. That was the documentary showcasing Edward Bertinsky's work from China. He made these amazing images showing entire towns and cities being leveled as the country was being redeveloped. And I found other photographers doing similar work. Those images just seemed so powerful. I'm not even sure what it was. Uh, I guess knowing that the people living in those cities and towns obviously had very little say in what was happening. And, and many of the photos were even devoid of people, but there was a real humanity to them. And I found that really moving. And I think the whole idea of manufactured landscapes rather than natural landscapes was something that I found really interesting at the time. So, so I started exploring that. And shortly after, I visited an art gallery during an exhibition of Andreas Gursky's work and was just floored to see his images printed at six by eight feet and, and even larger. I had never seen photographic prints that size. His work got me interested in other photographers like Thomas Struth, I also discovered Robert Polidori, who photographed architecture, but wasn't really an architectural photographer, at least not in the traditional sense. He did some fantastic images of abandoned buildings, as well as a beautiful series from Cuba uh, showing interiors and street scenes in Havana. Then one day at a bookstore, I came across this book by Italian photographer Gabriele Basilico. His life's work was documenting neighborhoods in European cities and towns, but he also did a really powerful series from Beirut. He showed the architecture of the city still standing and with a certain dignity, even after all the shelling and destruction. And I realized that in all these cases with all of these different photographers, there was a lot more going on here than just pictures of buildings. And, and what this work showed me was that we can learn a lot about a society just from its architecture. So I became really interested in that idea. Now, as I said, your inspiration may be completely different from mine. One thing I would suggest, though, is don't just limit yourself to photography. Uh, you can find inspiration in just about any medium, uh, painting, music, even poetry. In my case, I really like Christopher Pratt's paintings. All of his work, I find, has a minimalism, and I heard once it was due to the fact that he grew up in a chaotic and cluttered environment, so he seemed to have a real need for structure and neatness, even in his paintings. And speaking of painters, probably one of the most influential people in photography, certainly of the last hundred years, wasn't even a photographer. It was another painter, Edward Hopper. 
Hopper was at the height of his fame when Christopher Pratt began his career, and, and I always see an Edward Hopper influence in Christopher Pratt's work. Hopper also influenced the look of many films, especially in the film noir genre. And when we're thinking about inspiration, you know, I think for many of us, movies have had a huge impact on our visual language. So include movies you like, or, or at least the ones you like the look of, whatever inspires you. So once again, we're going to pin everything to a board on Pinterest, or you can arrange it on your computer using whatever app you like. Once that's done, we're going to move on to step two. So here's where you begin to study what you've curated and try to make some connections here. Maybe there are uh, some similarities to these pieces in the way they look. Uh, maybe it's the colors, the tones, the compositions. Is there something deeper though that speaks to you on an emotional level? You know, for me, as I mentioned, I found there was a real humanity that drew me to this work, even though many of these images were devoid of people. Now, let's start looking at the photos you've taken. Do the same thing, start pulling them all together, and focus more on the images you like. Maybe they reflect your personality and what really inspires you. And I should mention here, this is where you need to get to know yourself. It means understanding your motivations and your personal aesthetic. What drives you to pick up a camera in the first place? What are you passionate about? You know, maybe it's something you love or, or maybe it's something you even hate or, or something that makes you angry. In other words, who are you? Now, I can appreciate these are not always easy questions to answer. And while these three steps are simple, simple doesn't always mean easy. There is some work and some soul searching involved. But if you're willing to look a little deeper, you may start to see some clarity about your work. Now, compare your photographs to the work you really admire from other artists. It may give you some ideas about where you want to go next. Uh, maybe you're already on the right track, which, which would be great. Or, or maybe, like me, you will need a reset and need to start fresh. If so, keep in mind, even many pro photographers have completely changed their focus mid-career so they could finally start doing work that really inspired them. And that could be where you are, too, at this point. But hopefully... With some clarity, you will move on to step three. So by now you've come away with some sense of what you like from other photographers and artists and how your work compares to theirs. As you move forward, you should experiment. Ideally, start a personal project or, or a series, if you will. Uh, that series could be anything that interests you, uh, portraits of people from different walks of life. You could possibly explore your city or town or the outskirts of the city or town and, and try to capture the transition as you go from urban spaces to rural ones. Maybe there's a social or a political issue that you really care about. Depending on your level of experience, you may have done some of this already, but if not, try to shoot your subjects as many different ways as possible. Just, just try anything you can think of. Um, experiment with different lighting conditions, different, different compositions. Try to shoot in different types of weather or different times of the day. If you find something that feels natural or maybe a way of working that you really enjoy, that can help give you some insight into your style. As for me, I prefer to do a lot of planning in advance before I arrive at a location. I will almost always use a tripod. I will survey the location or the subject from every possible angle and I'll try to line up the shot even before I take my camera out of the bag. I may even return many times later just to get the ideal light that I'm looking for. Now, not everyone likes to work that way. You may prefer to be much more spontaneous and, and with certain types of photography you would really have to be. But no matter how you like to work, one thing you should avoid is just copying your favorite photographer, and trying to make your work look just like his or hers. I have been guilty of that myself at times. But you want to avoid producing exact replicas of someone else's work. Try to think of it this way. Why would you invest all that time and money in photography just to copy what someone else is doing? Produce something worthwhile. Try to produce something that's yours. So you may be thinking, if I want you to produce something that's yours, then why the hell did I ask you to pull together all that work from other photographers and artists? Now, there is a thin line here, but as long as you don't directly copy what someone else is doing, it is possible to use work that inspires you to help you find your own voice. The way you assemble all of these different influences from all of these different artists 
will give you something that no one else has done in exactly the same way that you've done it. And that style you develop will always be yours. Plus, if you take some time to get to know what really inspires you and what drives you to pick up a camera in the first place, I think what follows will be work you can be proud of. But keep in mind that just like you, your style may change over time, uh, just as your interests and motivations may change. If you look at my Instagram or website, I'll, I'll put the links down below, the images may not look that much like some of the influences I mentioned, especially those from early on. Although I think if you really look, you should at least see some traces. But the other reason is that my style evolved, and a lot of it happened after working on one photo project in particular. And in this next video, I break down how I created that project. I'll also explain how creating your own project or series can have a huge impact on your photography and possibly even launch your career if ultimately that is your goal. So be sure to check that out.